Hello everyone, welcome to Blade Files. This is my first vlog, believe it or not. Now, I do some very, very large historical posts on Facebook, and they do have a very, very large following, but they are a pain to write, I might add. And I thought it would be easier if I just did a, uh, a video blog or a vlog and actually talk about what I would normally write about. There are many, many, many myths in martial arts, and there are even a lot more myths in Filipino martial arts in particular. So today what we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to take a kind of a uh, brimstone and treacle approach. Uh, first comes the brimstone, and then I'm going to bring the treacle, which is the nice sweet drink that comes after you take the, the horribly tasting medicine in, in English tradition as I talk about a variety of things. So what I'm going to be talking about right now is one of the most persistent myths in Filipino martial arts and in martial arts in general um, throughout the world that, that just never ends and never dies. In Filipino martial art is this myth or legend of a mother art, an ancient mother art coming from God knows where, maybe from God from above, out of the ether, I don't know where it comes from. But this, this mother art is called Kali, and this word is, may come from, it sounds similar to the Filipino word for Chris or Kalis or sword, but it has nothing to do with that word. And it's found in many, 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 many dialects throughout the regions of the Philippines. But in the United States, Kali comes from two words, Kamut Lihuk, and it is an acronym for hand and body arts, and it has been kind of squished together to make the word Kali. That's where it comes from. It comes from the, uh, from lack of a better term, the California martial arts uh, type of culture, and it is spread in legend throughout the United States and all over the world. And what it really comes down to is older doesn't always mean better. Like a lot of martial arts systems, for whatever reason, or people, for whatever reason, put validity in something being older somehow makes it better, which is... It may or may not be the case. So if we look at the like the martial arts of Japan or the martial arts of China, a lot of the time these martial arts are still in existence in the forms that they are because, well, for lack of a better term, Japan came out of feudalism in the 19th century, for God's sakes, and was a closed society and had no clue what the rest of the world was doing. China came, Johnny came lately too, and, and other Asian nations as well into the modern world. So a lot of these arts were preserved primarily because they had not encountered what was going on in the rest of the planet, shall we say. So, older again does not always mean better. And the other myth that comes around with older is also the legends that get attached to these older martial arts. Like, somebody within these martial arts had mystical powers or could do a deadly punch or a deadly kick or their swordsmanship was incredibly dangerous. But the problem is these systems that are attached to their name or to their myth... Um, generally give a nice story and give credence to what's going on, but at the same time, we have to realize that we're completely different people who practice these arts and do these things. So, when it comes to FMA, FMA is the original MMA. It is a, an art that is a mixture of a wide variety of things that has been indigenized, to use my friend Professor Felipe Cano's term, for usage within the Philippines, both internal and external influences. And I'm going to be talking a lot about those in the near future on my vlogs too. So, And I do this to make us better martial artists as, as practitioners of FMA because it, it does us a disservice when all we rely upon is hyperbole. My art is more dangerous than your art, or my art is more deadly than your art. It, it's, it's meaningless. You know, my art's more combat effective. Well, what does that even mean? Can anybody even define that? Don't know. So... If your art is so deadly, how come you're still alive? And how come you haven't killed all your training partners, etc., etc., etc.? It's a non sequitur, and it doesn't make any sense. And please stop, because you're, you're making us all look bad by doing this kind of nonsense. However, there, is, there are many good things that are in FMA that are very useful, that other martial artists can use. And, and I enjoy the art, and I enjoy teaching it. I enjoy practicing it. And in my next vlog, I'm going to talk about how we actually develop in these arts. And then in my, my next vlog after that, I'm going to actually talk about the myths that come out of the uh, moral wars that, uh, that are so persistent and never die as well. And also, I'd also like to point out, somebody pointed out that I have an Illuminati symbol uh, for my symbol for School of Arms, and I just have to, 
I have to kind of make fun of this right now is that it's my, it's complicated as my family history is when, when we actually go into that on this channel as well. So please subscribe. That'll be coming out fairly soon too, probably by spring. But conspiracy theories will then explode all around me, which will be actually hilarious. So in that, in that vein and in that, uh, and in that closing, uh, faith, hope, and love, everybody.